Hello, 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 hello. I'm back again with Tea with Tay. Now, I've been running away from a new season because I've been a bit anxious. I'm like, what am I going to do in this new season? Oh my God. I have done everybody from the last season. But I mean, my granny was the first episode. So the second episode is somebody who I've always wanted to talk to for the longest time. I think she's running away from my podcast. <laughs> but finally, I don't catch her. You understand? <laughs> She's one of the best vocalists out of Africa. She's the voice of Africa. Her name is Atwaji. Vivian. Oh, she, you know my English. You heard me. I used to find out. I go Google Amo. Please put your hands together for my guest. Her name is Waje. Popularly known as yeah. Waje. Words aren't just enough. That's the acronym, right? Yes. yes, yes I don't yes. do my research. Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, love? I do. How you doing? I did like Dilla. You know, said they fear to start new seasons. Since Why? Aspa. You know, see the first season I overdo now. Nah. After I just say, ah, what will I do this new season? But I mean, I'm happy that I'm back. Yeah, I because you know, first of all, it has its market. I mm. this is ministry. I don't tell you before. Hallelujah. This is ministry. So no fear, just do. I beg. You get people where they where need to day here. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much, sis. But it's good to see. How have you been these days? Oh, I've been great. I've been great. Um, working a lot, you know. Um, I released um, a gospel album on my birthday. So that unbroken. Yeah, unbroken. Yeah. And um, I released an album before that, you know. Um, that, I that's YJ two point oh. Yeah. So I released that in July, mm-hmm. and I'm releasing another one. <laughs> You're on the road. Ah, you know, said. So Somehow, well, is that why we don't see you outside as much anymore? You're just in the studio, just recording and recording and recording. So, I'm, 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 I've been working so hard, like, my management is putting me through so much work. Mm. So, every little time I have to rest, I don't mind taking you know, say, you know, will not be spring chicken, you know, some places for the journal, they do quite quite. Uh, it's oil, <laughs> <level. laughs> we need oil level, you know. So, um, so I've been really working a lot, mm. so that's really why. Yeah, uh, but I've, I've, it's been an amazing year, I won't tell you a lie. Mm. An amazing year because uh, of the intention, Mm. you know. Um, Initially, when I started as a musician, I I started for passion. Mm. And passion is great, but you have to be very intentional about where you want to direct that passion. And I feel like over the years, I've been able to figure that out. So I'm not in any way confused. A lot of people might not understand, okay, why is Waji doing this? Mm. Or what is she trying to say? Mm. But there's always an end result, Mm. you know. So there's been more intention with my brand, my music. And my brand, really, you mm. know, outside just the music, but the person of Waji, the brand mm. Waji in itself, because yeah. there are so many things that the branch um, that feed off, so many things that feeds off the brand, mm. you know, from the acting to being a producer, you know, to, you know, so there are also running businesses. Yes, well. I'm running yeah. businesses. So you have to, you have to find that balance. If mm. not, you know, my manager said depression, hold back in back. Just they follow every Nigerian. And then when you go knock, say how far you get room. Say I not get room. Say ha. okay. The two when they go, one thing go inflation <laughs> goes. How far? Can I come and hug you a little wow. bit? You know, that's actually a reality now in Nigeria. No, it is. It is like you have to be very deliberate about your mind space, joy, and how that affects your work. We're gonna, wait, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to that, but um, I'm, you mentioned when you started off, you started off with passion, and yes. I really want to talk about the start, because um, yeah. you have an amazing trajectory. I've followed your music since I was in my teens, oh, up no, until you're now. So old. No, I know you're not old. I'm just saying that, I mean, yeah. I've loved the music from yeah. a while back, yes. right? And I, I first, I think the first, um, time that I ever got introduced to your music was Do Me. Mm. You had the powerful vocals on. She had the powerful bo- vocals on Do Me, if you don't know, by the way. She's well, the... Yes. Hmm? Peace Square Do Me. Well, yes. Do me. That, give it to me some more. Now, I just sing that part. Give it uh-huh. to me some more. You, it's now, I recognize it now. So, but then yes. again, I don't know, is, was that where you started from or no. do you have a no. deeper story than that or do you have oh, a story absolutely. that goes... Absolutely. At the time, I think Doomy came out 2007, 2006. Mm-hmm. At the time Doomy came out, I was already signed to a record deal five years in or six years in. I got signed because uh, I remember my daughter was about one Mm. Yeah, so I was about 19 at the time when I got signed. You already got signed? Yeah. So I um, the, I, I, I was in Enugu. So when I had my daughter, with uh, the stigmatization and everything, like, yeah, like right. you know, having teenage pregnancy, all that, yeah. ugh, I couldn't, I just couldn't live in Benin anymore. So my mom, um, I left Benin. I'm 
went to Enugu, to mm -hmm. my mom's sister's house. That's where I now stayed, you know, and such an amazing, I call her big mommy, Auntie Amaka. Mm -hmm. She's so, so beautiful in and out, mm -hmm. you know. So I stayed with her and she used to attend a church called Amon Chapel. Mm -hmm. And because I hadn't gotten to school yet, um, I started working as a church secretary. So my salary right. at the time was a thousand naira. So what year was this? <laughs> this was like two thousand and uh, this was two thousand. Yeah, two thousand. Yeah, one thousand naira could have gotten you some yeah, things, right? Two thousand. Well, what I was a very smart kid right. because I was a mom, and everything about my life was literally right? because I I remember the first shoes I bought for my daughter at six months. You know, I had to go and pay deposit a couple of times because with 1,000, you go share them now because you get to buy this, buy that, mm. buy it. So, you know, and yeah, 1,000 naira maybe will be 5,000 naira today. I don't know. You know, it's a <laughs> church work. I beg you. church work, only they can't afford. Well, idea. <laughs> <laughs> It was a growing church, first of right. all. But I enjoyed it because, first of I used to wear all my auntie's care suits. You know, that shit. Because oh, I was... I needed to be a grown-up. Oh, you know, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah. And um, I was in the choir. And one Sunday, after singing, I, that's where I met my mentor, Uncle Chris Madbuko. So when I met him, and he heard my voice, he was like, because I sang that day, and he was mm. like, oh, he should be, I have a record label, you know, he had an accent, you could tell he just got back from US, mm -hmm. lovely family, and he was like, you should be signed. And I was like, oh, no, I was not called to be signed. I'm for, called to sing the gospel. To the Lord. To the Lord. But so you want to be circular, you just wanted to sing for Jesus. I didn't even think, like, even if I were gospel, I didn't want to put my voice on a track. I thought my 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 calling as to as that as far as music singing, was concerned yeah. mm -hmm. was church, really? and I was fine with singing from church to church. Or oh, as a church minister, yeah, just carrying the gospel around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to change your mind. Now you convince me now. They say God gave you such a beautiful gift. You can't mm. just be there and and you can make money of this gift. So, so, yeah. so, are you saying that Doobie wasn't your first stint at music? No, wasn't... I had about, like, I released a single. There was Claire. Claire, make, una, make room for me. Claire, I'm representing Don't For Real. Claire, I'm watching and I'm born to win. Ooh. And even when, before Doobie, there was, want to go somewhere. I don't have it. At what, at what age were you when you did Doobie? I was 26. 25 eight 26. years after signing okay when they signed you like what happened in the label like where so was the I label was it it was in Enugu and wow, we right. ha they had a major artist called the real McCoy so he was the focus at the time mm. yeah and um also I like Uncle Chris had good intentions for his artists mm. but I don't think in terms of capacity good. we had that structure yeah. to fly as musicians mm. you know so um I think uh, the first thing was I I was at his house. I was in his house with his family and we were watching Channel O. And I saw P Square do their video Omogemi. Mm. So I told him I wanted to cover the song. So we did my own version and called it um, Bobo Me. Is it on YouTube? Can I yes, go watch it? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. And then we sent it to P Square and they loved it. Mm. And they put it on their um, remake album. So like a remix album. Oh, it was there? Yeah. So it was there. And then they came to Enugu for a show at PK Gardens. I can't re I hope that's it. I remember the name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was one of those artists that opened. So I sang the song. So Jude... Oh, but by the time that Pisque came in, to yeah. like, you were already an artist in Enugu that was known oh, yes. in Enugu. Oh, I was, right. I was, at least I was being played on radio. I wasn't the... I wasn't topping the charts or anything. Yeah. I was still grinding. Well, was, there even, was there a chart in Enugu at the time? Oh, well, honey, <laughs> we were not really in the, you know. The east, the east side. <laughs> we were, but there were artists that were really ill, please. There were, there were artists. Were they, oh, were they there, like yes. in the east? So they were not, um, Nigaro was huge mm. in Nigeria at the time. Yeah. So, you know, like he was in Lagos, Enugu, but mm. those were the artists that were representing. What Fino is now, they were artists that were really doing that. Maybe right. not in that scale, but, mm. you know, but they were really representing the East kind of. Okay. So I wanted to, ah, there was a group, oh, those girls really, they tried. What's their name? I don't forget. Because I remember because I used to record in their studio. Like, mm. the studio where they used to record, I went there to, to voice a couple of, mm. you know, so. 
Yeah. Oh my God. Even thinking of it now, I'm like, oh, Wajina, wow. You don't try. Oh. This uh, because by the time Dumi was out, what year did Dumi come out? It, I think it came out 2007, 2006. I did. I think. Primary five. You see. And I, I, I had no business singing that song. If, when I think about it now, yeah. give it to me some more. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing about it is, when Dumi came out, a lot of people did not know I was a girl on Dumi. And I had left Enugu. I had moved to Onicha, to my grandma's mm. house. Right? So we lived near, we, our, our house is on Francis Street. Okay. And we lived close to the market. Right. So they'll be, and trust now, we like Onicha, main market. Did what? They blast, they they blast this song. This song. Mm. this song was number one in Africa. I'm going to mm. tell them, saying I'm missing this. So they, they look at me and say, oh, nah, you don't they, go sing You don't go try to perform the part for them. You sing with him. What do you sing? You can pinch me, eh? Because they didn't give you like a... So I was YJ, but family knew me as Ebele, you know? And so they didn't, and I wasn't in the video, mm. you know, because... Was, was, there, was there a reason for that? For not being in the video? Yeah. So we had two weeks notice. And like I said, the record label didn't have the capacity. Mm. You understand? So mm. me... I know guy who did that person who give you money to do international mm. passports. Now, everything that the, you understand, you they depend. Oh, that's shoot that video for South Africa. Now, South Africa didn't shoot them. Ooh, do you understand? Right. So, there were so many things that just didn't, mm. you know. And then I heard so many things ah, that the girl that sang this song, she's married and her husband is Ibagada. Some people carry that. Oh, she's not from Nigeria. I was like, oh, God. It's ah! <laughs> what are you oh. in me, God. Oh, so how did you feel at the time when I you knew was that angry. this song was number one in Africa? My vocals, like your vocals, were, were, were like the major part of this song. Yeah, I mean, Pisque killed their own verse. Oh but yeah, absolutely. That's your your what they call it hook. Yeah, it's so good. So like, how did you feel knowing that you know what? I want, I want, like, I didn't know how to feel rather than disappointed because in my, at the time as a a child, that's the only way I could feel. Mm. Because I felt that we could have found a way. Around it, yes. Around it. <laughs> so let me tell you about something amazing, AfriChange. AfriChange is a reliable platform for people living in Canada to send money to Nigeria. With the AfriChange app, you can literally send money to your friends and family within minutes. And all you have to do is to download the app and use my promo code TWT and you get 5% bonus on your first transaction. Amazing, right? So download the app from Play Store or iOS now. I use my promo code TWT. So let's get back to the show. Okay, so Uncle Chris and I came to Lagos. Um, I think Storm Records organized the show. Right. That was the first place I saw the band perform. He was the major artist that right. day. And Storm, Re based on um, Uncle Chris's relationship with... Um, Storm Records and mm. the, their boss, the bosses, Obi Asika yeah. and, the rest of, and Ulisa, right? Yeah. They, they gave me the opportunity to perform. Right. So that's that was my very first major performance. So you had not been to Lagos, even after you had sang on. Yeah, I so I would come on holiday. Right. To my uncle's house as Ebele. Ebele, the our daughter, not our the singer. Our daughter, not Waje. the singer. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? So, but luckily for me, Obama of rhythm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think he lives in the U.S. now. I don't know how Obama heard my voice. I think somehow one of my songs got to play on radio here. And Obama now put me up for MTV, MTV Base Advance Warning, which was a competition in 2007. And that, that's really where my journey started. So now your hopes were up, right? Absolutely. And all of a sudden... It's been dashed. You didn't yeah. win the thing. What now happened after? What was the after? When did the big break now finally come? When you, when you, when you knew that, you know what? Finally, f all this hard work is now finally paying off. Because all those times, you just did coast. You just did yeah. also here and there. Yeah. And I understand what it is for a creative to be in that space where, you know what? We're trying this thing. We just want it to click, right? When did the click happen for Waje? One hour. Mm, that's true. So that was One hour song. because... I had done for a minute before one hour, and it, the acceptance was amazing. For but for a minute. For a minute. Can I be a girl? But you don't sing too I've, No, I've been there, sweetie. I've given. Mm. I've given of myself, my soul, my spirit. You know, um, so for me it was great. But what one hour did was to um, distinguish me. 
make so people could tell like okay because remember that i'm coming from a place where a lot of people knew the name they didn't know the face and mm. eventually when they knew the face they just weren't able to and i was yaga yaga anyway what do you mean please explain yaga yaga. oh gosh i was never put together <laughs> Is your honesty, oh Fabio? My God. Like sometimes, even when I see myself, I say, "God, no, what was this thing before? What? what do you think that was? Was it because there was so much you're handling? Eh, you're not young. get money. You ah. put together where you have money. <laughs> money is such a big factor. It's such a big factor, and the truth is capacity. Mm. I was working with people who were as passionate as me. Mm. I feel for every young artist right now, what I tell them is, yes, look for someone who's passionate about your brand, but look for someone who can turn the passion to business. Not somebody who's as passionate as you, because two of you, you eat passion. <laughs> I'm passionate. You're passionate. Passion. You're hungry. Truth to you will be dry with passion. You, 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 what? Passion fruit. <laughs> <laughs> passion fruit. You will suffer. You will suffer. No, but sell you will suffer. Her. As what? a creative, if you're the passion you get. No, 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 no. You are dumb. Mm. So one of the things that helped me, I'll be very honest with you, because I I was never really a bold person. And nobody taught me confidence mm. or being bold. No. I would do that if I'm mentoring right. young ladies. I try. Even in your natural state. Mm. You have to first believe in your natural state before you start applying other things. Yes. Right? Yes. I didn't have that. So I, I was always a shadow of myself. Right. Like, I remember performing and I'll be looking, you know, for validation from from my audience. And half the time, the audience is there because they want to be hyped. And then you that is supposed to come and hype them, you they, are now, they will just be bored. They'll be like, oh God, can this woman just leave this place? Ooh, Let okay. I think I have to do all the crazy. So basically, you are trying to look for inspiration from them. They are trying you to draw from can't. you too. So, yeah, no, it doesn't work. Mm. You know, so what changed my life? was one day I had a conversation just before I went on stage with MI. And I asked him, I said, have you ever watched MI on stage? You would think that the king of Zamuda has arrived. He passed with, yeah. <laughs> hey, God. So I was not like, Em, how do you do it? I don't know how to do it. Em and Sasha, actually. Sasha. Yes, please. Sasha, when, when I was in the house, because she was one of the, um, she was sort of like a coordinator for the finals, mm. right? So she came backstage as an artist, talked to all of us who were, you know, in the competition and, mm. you know, tried to help us with our confidence. And I, I told her, I said I was nervous. I didn't know what I was going to do because dancing at the main team was the one who gave me my... I was supposed to sing and dance mm. and, you know, all those remembering the lines, yeah. and you know. And she said, perform like it's the last four minutes of your life. Oh, my dad, dear. You perform. You need to go and watch my performance. As I swing it, <laughs> what I did, Beyonce, I've not done it. And you were like, what did they happen? What? Maybe not a I wear bomb shorts and mm. play suits. Wear heel. I did it. I broke. I said, oh, oh. I said today. We die here. We die here. This performance. What? But how did it go? Like, was it great? It was great, but not great enough to win. Mm. But it was great. Mm. I, I'm, I would say that I was really proud of myself because at the time, you know, my friends still refer to that in terms of my capacity. They say, oh, what do you, the people don't know that you dance, you do these mm. things, you know. Mm. That, that's really the, you know, the part of me that showed that, that okay, if I, if I intend to do something and I'm focused on it, you I can, can get actually, it done. Yeah, I can yeah. actually get it done. You know, but M's own was, he said, Look, so we were backstage and he, he said, look outside. And I looked. It was um, Silver, Silver Bird Cinema, mm. the launch of One Naira and one of his albums. I remember what I wore that day. I wore black leggings and a jacket that had pearls. And my, I think my hair was like a fringe Dream. or something like that. He now said, look, I said, he said, everybody seated here came to see you. You are the king in this kingdom. They are all... Your subjects, your subjects at this moment. My goodness. When I that. went at all that stage, it was like everybody was meeting me for the first time. Let's talk about your your Red Velvet album. <laughs> yeah. You know, that album is one of my best from you. I actually... But it's the story behind it that actually makes me very interested in having the conversation. Right. right? Because um, there's some songs there that you know that this one person go through something yeah. before yeah. they talk out. Yeah. Um, there's one that, about truth. Yeah. One is truth. Yeah. This is the truth. You don't um, take me there. Then there's one that's um, 
It's basically, I feel like you're talking about like love that was not returned, right? What, what inspired that album? Because it was a body of work that you, I knew that this one had, to, she, had she had to go through an emotional phase yeah. to get us to this. Yeah. The album took two years, I think, right? And at the time, I was, I was back in, f- I was in and out of a relationship, mm. you know. So some of the things I wrote were based on the experiences, you mm. know, or sort of like inspired it. Maybe not all the way through, but I inspired mm. it. And you know how sometimes we as human beings, you know, we're having a conversation earlier and I told you how much I have grown to be able to sit back and have more sympathy and be empathetic towards my exes Mm. because I now see why Mm. some of the things they did, they did. But at the time with the truth, I just couldn't process why somebody would say they love you and they can't be with you. But they want to be guys with you. Let's talk about music for a bit, right? You know, the music industry here is very interesting, right? <clears throat> um, the creatives here are not really giving their flowers as they should. You're only as good as your last hit, mm. right? Doesn't that leave you to any anxiety? Absolutely, it does. If you're being honest, and it does. It's tough. Because I, as a young creative like this now, mm-hmm. the anxiety would really hold me. <laughs> so like how do you now deal with all this anxiety because you know that you know what at the end of the day you are a, a superstar performer you're a singer one of the best out of Africa but then again the competition is as the market has changed the market is even more cruel to us now because the demand is different everything is changing how do you deal with anxiety knowing that you know what God I have to still be on top I have to still be doing this my 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 album is out I need, I need to make it number one at least it needs to be on the charts like all these things that constantly flying through your mind how do you now Hmm. keep yourself in a space where you're not losing your mind yeah for for a long time i think the anxiety got to me Hmm. because i didn't understand why i'm not i'm not a lazy person i love my job when i need to do what i need to do i do it Hmm. So I didn't quite understand why I didn't I didn't understand what the barrier was. Do you understand? Mm. So the first thing was me being honest about where I am. And I think that was a conversation between me and Timmy Dakulo. He says, first mm. things first, Waji. On be honest about where you are. Do you understand? Because you know the thing about perception and what it does to us in the industry. So you are constantly working hard, not working smart. And then you're trying to compensate. So you probably invest more in things you should not be investing because, and unfortunately, I wasn't making the best business choices because I was working with passionate people who were as passionate as I am. Right. So they didn't even even bring the, the structure. When I got signed to this new money, or when I, you know, my, my manager and I now, mm-hmm. when I said, okay, we're starting all over again. What do we do? I said, okay, we'll release an EP. I said, you know what? At the anxiety of me being the one paying everybody, I don't need that anymore. So we had a structure that for everything I'm paid, a certain percentage goes to the side. Mm. How Alex pays people? I don't care. Makeup, I don't know. Band, and my band make good money. I think I'm one of the, the few musicians that pays their band well from rehearsal fee. Mm. We are cons- very considerate. What I pay one person in my band is what other bands pay three people. You know, you know, you know what's so interesting? Em? I, I, I always say to my friends that who are in music, like your music, your industry is even tougher in the creative space. It's a, I don't want to use the word wicked. It's a, it's cruel. It's crazy. You will walk in, I just, we are blessed though to still be here that I'm yes, doing this. It's yes, like, I don't yes. take that for granted because I know people I started with that, like you see them and you don't even recognize them. You don't. True. And you don't recognize them, not because you don't want to, but they are just a shadow of themselves. Why? B- bad business decisions. Me and my manager, we did an experiment. So we went, we asked people to go into the street and we, found, we told them, ask them your opinion about Waji. This was in like 2020. 20, wow. And everybody had a great thing to say, but 
you will hear her, but she 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 likes break up break up songs, but she's <laughs> this, but she's that. She oh I like her so much she but it. And then we now start going to business people, and you realize that when we now started intentionally presenting me the way I wanted to be presented mm-hmm. and how I can sell brand. In the meeting right there, you see the, you see the person like, oh, wait, I never thought of that. Oh, wow. Meanwhile, you there. You just sitting did. pretty, hoping that you're Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't say you. Mean. <laughs> that they are co- Do you understand? So that's the thing I got wrong. Mm. I was, I always thought, work on the business, mm. on the music, and the business will come. Were you really, really going to quit music? Because that rumor almost plagued my soul. I was like, really? I really thought about it. But at the time I thought about it, at the time that came out, mm. I was I, had, I was over doing music. Like, I was over not doing music, if right. that makes any sense. But whatever pushed you to that decision to say, you know what, I'm done with this thing, bye. Your question, how is it that you're working so hard and it just seems like you're never... There's this almost syndrome you're never really getting there mm. you're never really getting there do you understand and then i will look at and then i will have meetings with people and they'll tell me how oh, are you uh, let's say we want to release something and then we've put out 10 million aside for it or 50 million somebody will tell you ah no in this music business if you don't have like 50 million you have not started to, if you don't have, you understand and uh, you know just wrong business decisions yeah and and the things that you're, you're a woman of faith right i want to know how because we're going to talk about your gospel album but I want to know, your, in your relationship with God, right, do you ask some questions? Like, you know when you're working so hard and you're like, God, everybody else is getting this thing together. Why is my... Because sometimes to myself, I'm just like, you know what, well, God, I know you love me, but these things that are happening don't make sense, right? Especially with my career, some things that happen. Did you ever sit down and say, you know what, well, God, you have been unfair to me as far. These things that I'm doing, like, you saying that, oh, I want to be with the eat crew. Why is this not clicking? Did you ask God, like, you know what? What's going on? Do you don't like me enough or what? What is this good? Yeah, initially I did when I knew little. I would quarrel and I would throw tantrums. And sometimes I'll tell myself, I beg, I'm not, I don't even, I'm not even in the mood to pray. After a while, what am I praying for? It's not like I'm gonna get it. Why is it that we and please don't come for me? It's a question. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm telling the our people that are mm-hmm. listening. Have you ever sat down to think why we have so many strong people who claim they love God and we are still under bad governance? I don't think enough people who love God in governance. Don't you think? No. We've used religion to spoil everything. Mm. Dominate the earth. If you had 70% of strong Christians who understand the word, not religion, who are mm. dominating real estate, tech, media. media. They will have a say. I see. I So I, I see the change. Like, you literally dropped three albums. Like, you're about to drop the third one, right? Yeah, in five you months just kept, and You've just been working. Days. I don't see you outside. No, I just see you just doing work. Five and you months dropped and ten an, days. Yeah. A whole gospel album. Yes. Why? Because I just needed to say thank you for... Mm my eyes of understanding being open to who he truly is, not religion. Like mm. who, I, who he has been to me. I need, I, 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 just, I just needed to tell God, thank you. Like mm. how, because, oh, I have goofed many times. Things I've goofed, uh, goofed. And the goofing is not, goof? I'm not like made mistakes. I'm, it's not immorality or that. No, that's yeah. not it. Is God will give you positions and you literally not see it and you just be because in your mind they are talking about mm. something entirely different. You understand? And then you miss opportunities and you will still bring those opportunities but, again. So it's almost like God go carry you go back to class when you never pass them until you don't pass that class. Mm. So just even being here after this number of years, mm. I may not be number one female artist mm. to a lot of people, but he's creating, you know, opportunities for me. Mm. And I just needed to use that album to say, thank you for thank healing you. me. Like with this industry, a lot of people say, oh, women, women, they're not, you know, enough women in the industry. And I agree. Mm. And sometimes it's almost like I am heartbroken when I get 
um dms from young girls who want you know or people who are up and coming and in mm. my heart i'm like oh i really do want to help mm. but i'm grateful that it didn't happen then because now next year mm. i'm going to have i'm having i'm, I'm working on a hub yeah that is going to accommodate yeah. not necessarily accommodate in terms of sleeping but in terms of Young talent, young talents from producers to singers to performers to, and it's a hub where you'll be groomed like a, it's it's a class where mm. because that was my problem, right. and I I feel like a lot. It's so it's great to sign people, but that's not my calling. Mm. Do you understand? A lot of people need to if it's the branding and you know, and I'm working with because it's a billion dollar industry. There's a song I, I recorded recently, and it's such a beautiful anthem. It's going to be out in December. Mm. And it's called Bigger. And the whole point of Bigger is it's it's a place of, it's, it's a motivational song, but it's also a song of knowing me. I'm bigger, like in, in, mm. in knowing who he is. But it's not a Christian song. And I think every creative needs to have a relationship with God because creativity is, is it's actually a, a relationship with God. Yeah. Because for you to create, it's God that's in your mind and yeah. everything. And, yeah. And I feel like for us to even be seen as creatives, yeah. we need that. Yeah, we do. Um, we're coming to the end of this amazing... Great. <laughs> I feel like we have so much in common. Like, I, I wish we could talk for longer, but I'm really interested in your, your album. I know recently there's been some terms and wadget type of vibes. Oh, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Oh but really, God. like, really, like, I don't think that the females in the industry really collaborate as much as the guys. I don't know if it's going to change eventually if... Like people who have been in the industry like you longer would want to bring in the younger females and say, you know what, but let's the thing work is, together. I've always collaborated with females. On so my first album, I had Tiwa. I've right, worked with true. Omaomi. I've right. worked with Yemi Alade. I'm ah, always, you have a song with Yemi? Yeah. I'm oh. available with an oh. oh, no, that's a different song. But I'm available is the name of the song. Yeah. I've, I'm never shy. I never shy away of working with females because mm. I, I respect, because I'm a female artist and I know how different it is in terms of pulling your weight and struggles and you know so i respect when a woman is you know like putting in what she needs mm. to put in you know and uh, like recently you know i sent i tweeted that i would love to work with them mm. and she reached me back and those are the things I, I love seeing i love that people respect people's creative process mm. and respect people's brands enough to say you know what i'm meeting you at your table like mm. i respect your brand mm. i want to work with you and there's nothing mm. wrong with that um, i mean we've come to the end of the show but before i finally let you go yeah what is the one thing that you would say to young creative rights young creatives right now to just help them I mean some of us are new in this space I mean I'm barely like two years or three years into my career mm. and I've told you all the things that I've yes. gone through and you have gone through these phases you have dealt with too many emotional roller, roller coasters. coasters and you've finally come out to a point you've come to a point where you are so ass assured you know yourself and you are doing well with I mean mentally how do we navigate? What are the things that we need to know beforehand? What are the things that we should know not to do? Um, first is that it's hard work. It's right. not, don't, Asha Kerr is big right now, but people don't know that he's had his story yes. coming. He's been yes. working yes. really hard, really hard. So it's never a, oh yeah, so I saw this person on social media and next day the person blew. You go and check person has been grinding and then in, in terms of the anxiety and the pressure don't be too hard on yourself if you don't know what you're doing so ladies and gentlemen and gentlemen <laughs> you have to have more you have to have more than your talent, than your talent. thank you Timisa. thank you for for letting me you know speak and tell my truth you know i feel like a lot of people think they know me but they really don't so I respect shows like this because it gives me the room to be vulnerable without thinking of what, you know, like, oh, what I said, was it wrong or was it, you know, sometimes we need to be in this space.